Welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. Are you all in the Christmas mood just baking up a storm, your Christmas cookies and, and gingerbread houses and all those kinds of things? Well, we are just starting to get in the mood here of making Christmas cookies and all of the Christmas baking. So today I thought it would be a perfect time for me to share with you my very favorite Christmas cookie recipe. It tastes amazing and it only has five ingredients in it. It's perfect to put together with some other Christmas cookies on a plate to give to your neighbors or if you're going to a cookie exchange or if you need to bring cookies to the school classroom or a church function. This recipe is perfect. It's easy and quick and it tastes amazing. I actually stole this recipe from Kevin's mom. It's a chocolate chip butter cookie recipe and it is my favorite. When they're in the house, I eat them until they're all gone. That's how good they are. When I was growing up, we didn't have the tradition of making a bunch of Christmas cookies to package up and give to neighbors and friends, but we did receive cookies from at least one neighbor, and as a kid, I always loved that. Kevin and I have been doing that for a few years, and we really, really enjoy it. This is a recipe that gets included every year. So I want to share that with you today. We're gonna to get started baking. I wanna go over with you the five ingredients that we'll be using. It's super easy. None of it is really expensive, which I really like. In our recipe today, we're gonna to be using all-purpose flour. We like to use organic all-purpose flour, but if you don't have that at home, just regular all-purpose flour is great. We normally get our organic flour from Walmart, it was out the last couple of times we were looking. We even looked all over Springfield, Missouri when we were there, we couldn't find it. So there was another health food store that had some. So we got this Simple Truth Organic and we actually really like that too. Okay, moving on. We're gonna be using powdered sugar. Now this is organic powdered sugar, which I found through Azure Standard. Azure Standard is the company that we order a lot of bulk items from. I like to order in bulk because I feel like it saves me a lot of money. Azure Standard has good prices on organic things and I generally only shop once a month and Azure Standard delivers once a month. So that really um, helps me out. If you like bulk buying or are interested in doing that, I love it. And if you're interested in finding out more about Azure Standard, you can do that in the description of this video. I'll leave a link to it um, and you can go right there. Also from Azure Standard, in this recipe I'm using their chocolate chips. The reason I like these chocolate chips so much is these are the minis. I'm gonna be using mini chocolate chips in this recipe because I they feel like the chocolate like just goes further. And these are also organic chocolate chips, which are actually pretty hard to find. Today we're also gonna be using vanilla. This is my homemade vanilla and butter. And this is our homemade butter. The butter needs to be melted, but cooled. We're gonna be using an entire cup. This is a homemade from our cow hope. She's such a wonderful girl. It'll taste so good. Okay, so five ingredients. Pretty easy, let's get started. The first thing we need is two cups of flour. This is all purpose white flour. And I actually like to sift these ingredients, especially the powdered sugar that we're gonna be using. So you don't need a fancy flour sifter. 
I just use a big sieve or wire colander like that. So two cups of flour. We're gonna do the same thing with the powdered sugar. From Azure Standard, I ordered five pounds of powdered sugar. That's what's in this bag is five pounds. We need one cup of powdered sugar. We're gonna use the colander again. I don't want big chunks of powdered sugar. We're just gonna sift that. I switched to a spatula and that seems to be working faster. Okay, we're gonna add one cup of chocolate chips. And in this particular cookie recipe, I think that the mini chocolate chips are the best. We're gonna make them into little balls. And I think that the mini chocolate chips like equally distribute in the cookie better than the bigger chocolate chips. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But I like the mini chocolate chips. I think they go farther too. I don't know. So we're putting in one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Dark chocolate would be really good too. Now these are all the dry ingredients we need. So I'm going to take this time to just mix these up. So now we're going to mix in the liquid ingredients. Um, I'm going to be using a half a teaspoon of vanilla. This is homemade vanilla. Now, if you don't know, vanilla is super easy to make at home. You take two vanilla beans. In this case, I've cut them in half and then sliced them lengthwise through the vanilla bean. Put them in here and filled this up with vodka. Shake it every day. Within six weeks, you have the most amazing flavored homemade vanilla at like a fraction of the price. Okay, so I am going to add one half of a teaspoon of vanilla. Now, if you don't have homemade, that's fine. Just use the vanilla you get from the store. Half of a teaspoon. I'm actually going to put this in my melted butter just to mix it in because this is the only liquid in this entire recipe. If I were to just dump the vanilla into the um, powder, into the, the dry ingredients, I feel like it'd be kind of lost in there. Okay, so I'm just mixing it in to the melted butter. Now this is one cup of melted butter, which is two sticks. This is our homemade butter, but if you don't have homemade butter, just use butter from the store. It is melted and cooled, okay? Mix that up, and I'm just gonna add that to the dry ingredients. And we're just going to mix that up. It's almost like working with a biscuit dough. It's getting a little bit more difficult to use with my spatula, so I'm just gonna switch to my hands. Once you see that all of the dry ingredients have been mixed into the butter, and they almost look kinda wet, then you know you're done. So I'm just making sure to mix this all up so I don't see any of the dry ingredients. And then we'll get them ready for the cookie pan. I have my oven preheating to 350. I think that this recipe is perfect for busy moms. This is so fast to put together, so fast to bake in the oven. This would be a perfect um, recipe to take to a cookie exchange. So if you've never been to a cookie exchange, they're really fun. So basically, you take like several dozen cookies. So if they're gonna be five or six people there, you take five or six dozen cookies. You take all one kind of cookie, and then at the end, after you, you know, 
eat a bunch of stuff and have cocoa and coffee and all these kinds of fun things. Then at the end, you get to take a dozen cookies from each person that has brought cookies. So you like automatically have this amazing cookie stash for your family for Christmas. It's pretty fun. This is a recipe that I would take. So simple and easy especially for busy moms who are working or just have their schedules packed full of things. Okay, this is done. Let's clear off the counter, get our cookie sheets out and get them ready for the oven. Okay, so we need to get these on the pan because let me tell you, this is like the perfect cookie dough for just eating. And if I don't get this on the pan and in the oven soon, I'm just gonna eat it all just like this. But because there are no raw eggs in here, this is actually the perfect cookie dough to eat. Okay, anyway, so I'm just gonna use my hands and take about, I don't know, what looks like a golf ball sized um, piece of the cookie dough and roll it, roll it into a ball. Just put it right there on the cookie sheet. They're not gonna spread out a whole lot when we bake them, so we don't have to worry about them uh, melting into each other or anything. So we're just gonna keep doing this until our pan is full or until the cookie dough is gone. Sing choirs of angels Sing in exultation Sing all your citizens of Well, there would be a few more, but I ate some of the dough when I gave a little bit to the kids. So these need to go into the oven at 350 degrees until the bottoms are golden brown. We don't have to worry so much about the tops, but we'll need to be checking the bottom. Hooray! It's been a total of 23 minutes. I think the cookies are done. Let's take out a pan and check. They already smell like my favorite Christmas cookies. Now we just need lightly browned on the bottom. They are lightly browned on the bottom, so they're done. Let's turn off the heat. Now I can't forget the other pan in the oven, so let me pull that out real quick. They look awesome. I'm just gonna transfer these onto a cooling rack so that they cool faster, and that means I get to eat one faster. I cannot wait to eat some. I'm not sure that any of these are gonna make it to the neighbors, but good thing it's an easy recipe and I can make a bunch more. So I'm gonna get the rest of these off of this pan and the other pan, let them cool a little bit, and then we'll try one. Surprise! There are some special guests today. Grace and Samantha haven't been on videos in a long time, but I made cookies, so I figured <laughs> that they would be able to help me try them. So we're gonna dig in and tell you what we think. Now, we've had these recipes like a million times, so we know we like them, but. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> so good. That's really good. Very really good. So I definitely think y'all should try this. Take them to your neighbors, to church, cooking exchanges. Anyway, make sure if you love them, you let me know. Make sure you tell me if you try them. You guys, if you're enjoying our videos, make sure that you share them with everybody you know. That is the best way that you can help us here on the homestead. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Merry Christmas and God bless.